Hallelujah. I thank God for this beautiful day God has given us and this is the home Bible study and we are now into week 95. So it's all about His mercy and God had put desire in our hearts to listen to the word of God and uh, really we are so blessed to have Him living inside of us, right? So God has chosen us. I really thank God for that. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, today I'm going to talk about the greatest commandments which was spoken by Lord Jesus Christ. There was a scribe who had come to Jesus. You know, if you look at Mark the Gospel, um, 12th chapter, there you can see from verses 28 onwards, there was a scribe came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well and asked him which is the first commandment of all and if you look at the previous verses on this chapter Jesus was giving answer uh, to a lot of questions uh, this one is quite uh, important for us to understand exactly Jesus was dealing with two commandments so we have to pay attention to this two commandments and the whole law and the prophets are hanging on these two commandments that's what Jesus had said in one other place so I want to just talk about these two commandments and it's very very important and pivotal point to just hang around with the Lord hallelujah so here the first commandment of all if you look at the 20th verse you can see that the first commandment of all with question mark and for that question of the scribe Jesus was giving answer in following two verses if you look at the 29th verse Jesus said and Jesus answered him the first of all the commandment is hear O Israel the Lord of a God is one Lord and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all the heart and with all the soul and with all the mind and with all the strength this is the first commandment and the second is like namely this thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself there is none other commandment greater than this most of you know those who are born again those are Christians right most of you know about these two commandments and today I'm going to talk about the vital part of it because if you want to achieve the second commandment, if you look at the John the Gospel, Jesus was talking about closely on this part of the second commandment, right? Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. If you want to do that, you have to be having your anchor parked inside Jesus. So you have to have the first commandment instead of your heart completely understood, then you can follow that first commandment because love your neighbor as love yourself if you, if you read this commandment it's I mean for me like you know it's huge it, it just speaks volumes to me loving your neighbor as yourself so what I'm thinking if only I know the love of Jesus deeply seated in my heart I can achieve the second commandment or I can operate or I can see myself operating using the second commandment or by the second commandment so I just want to understand exactly that's why I'm just looking at this verse uh, you know 30th verse and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all their heart and with all their soul and with all their mind and with all their strength this is the first commandment see love thy God with all thy heart all thy soul, all thy mind, all thy strength. So first one was all about heart. So heart is something is essentially important that we have to open to God. So a lot of things are inside our heart. So we have to understand the state of our heart and we have to understand what are the areas we have to work upon. To prepare our heart you know before you get into the word of God you have to examine your heart so that you can prepare yourself and prepare your heart accordingly 
so when god speaks or gives a word if we just goes and you know gets seated inside of the heart without preparing your heart if you go on sit i am very sure that you will not be able to exactly get the word from the lord right it's a profound truth by the way so that's why i believe god has told very clearly here that with all their heart with all my soul and with all the mind and with all the strength so your heart and your soul and mind so soul and mind are connected with the emotional uh run and strength is something to do with your physic and heart is something to do with your spirit partially and partially so this is my understanding and this is another subject i'm not going to talk about it today so heart is the core layer and surrounded by your emotions that's your mind and your soul and the next layer is your your flesh that's a body from the context of spirit soul and body we can just you know map these three one is a heart then you know you have your soulish realm then you are, you have your body so when you have prepared your heart to seek the lord and god is so happy hallelujah and he just comes and dwells and you know he explains things to you and he will talk to you he will show you the word and you know he will show you know like you know this is what i am looking forward to you know have uh, i mean this is what i have for you to um, you know execute in your life and this is what uh, i have for you to do in this world you know many things god would be able to talk to you if you have your heart quite open i am very sure about it that you know you are able to exactly understand heart is the inner core right and surrounded by your soulish realm that's your mind and soul so whatever you put inside of your heart that would get reflect you know that would get reflect on your soulish realm so if you you know one place i mean i don't have the quotation now so when jesus was talking about like you know what you have in your heart will come out of your mouth right so if you start to have the word of god you know being fed inside of your heart what happens is the result of it is that you know it's all about like good pressure so it would come like fruit of the spirit spirit right so so but if you look at something some junk if you watch or if you hear to some sort of uh, you know non biblical high times and if you are like going for uh, you know gossiping or backbiting all this stuff if you are going to sow in your heart so obvious that whatever you are going to speak would be the reflection of your heart because the soul and the mind is a kind of a processor in your computer like it's in kind of a processor so whatever you have in your heart will process it and your body would just you know express it so it's very important that this is a good analogy i believe to easily understand the first the commandment with jesus was talking about to the scribe because it's so profound truth isn't it so whatever you have in your heart would reflect in your soul and your mind that's when it gets processed and your body would start to emit whatever you think about because i can make you happy by my words i make you cry by my words right so if i talk to you right so what happens that sometimes you know like uh brother you're so good and you know you have done this i mean i just start applauding you like you know praising you you're so happy your emotional realm is filled with joy and happiness uh, and you know you're receiving all the words of plasma you know like you say oh john you yeah i have been john when i went to john and john was talking about good things about me i'm so happy about it so i'm so happy so you you are expressing in your body right at the same time when i talk about something like you know this is not good this is unfair you know you are not supposed to do it if i start to condemn you obviously you are soul and emotions right in between, the soul and mind will have a negative emotion not you know and that would reflect a kind of um, unhappiness you show you know explicitly unhappiness on your body wow it's awesome isn't it so here if you look at this particular word the first of all the commandments is and on the 30th verse he says and thou shall love the lord thy god with 
all their heart and with all their soul and with all the mind and with all their strength so there's a pattern very nicely drawn by Jesus and Jesus was drawing this pattern Hallelujah. Before you step into the second commandment, I request each and every one of us as a believers to pay attention closely to the first commandment because there's a sequence of steps which we have to go through. Turn with me to Jeremiah 29 chapter verse 11. It's quite known passage to many of the believers, I believe. Let's go to Jeremiah 29 chapter verses 11. 12 and 13. In fact, the first A section of uh, verse 14 as well. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, say the Lord. Thoughts of peace and not of evil, and to give you an expected end. Then shall ye call upon me, and ye shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. And ye shall seek me and find me. When ye shall search for me with all your heart. And I will be found of you, say the Lord. If you look at this word, there is a promise, more than to say that, a promise as an assurance from the Lord. Jeremiah 29 11 says, it's an assurance from the Lord. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you. The God, the Father, the, the God who had created you, it's giving you a clear Assurance that each and every single thought that I think toward, you know, uh, you, thoughts of peace and not of evil. Each and every thought of you, God says it's all about peace. How to give you peace, you know, not of evil. And to give you an expected end. You know what the expected end means here? The side uh, column says, in an expectation. So it says that, you know, uh, it, it's, it's a thought of peace. And not of evil to give you an expected end. So and then he says the following verse: Then shall he call upon me. When? When you know what is that God is processing in his mind? What is that God is processing in his soul and in his mind and in his heart? Because his heart is full of good thoughts about you and about me. And his thoughts are always good to give us an expected end. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forevermore. I mean, I'm so happy to share this word today. Like, you know, his thoughts are always good because his heart is good towards us hence his processing unit that's his soul and his mind the mind of God and soul you know soul of God is processing good things about us and that's reflecting so nicely so profoundly that you know it's all about the expected end the good end not the evil one it's always good 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 right when you look at the first chapter of Genesis whatever God created God told it is good it is good it is good he was happy about you. He was happy about me. He just waiting. He's, he's been waiting and waiting and waiting and longing for our, you know, just for, for us to take a U-turn to go back to him and just to make a time of, you know, make ourselves uh, available before God to listen to him. If you look at the following verse, because of this 11th verse, which is a kind of a, you know, heartbeat of God, we are moved by God's, uh, you know, goodness. Like, you know, oh my God's a good dad. All the thoughts are good. It's not evil anymore. So, he says 12th verse, Then shall he call upon me, and he shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken unto you. God is reflecting his heart to you and to me. Then, he is expecting that, since I'm, a, you know, since I'm, you know, showing up my heart, it's so transparent. It's all good thoughts. Now suddenly you will come to me. I know for sure. That's the reason the following verse says. Then shall he call upon me. And he shall go and pray unto me. And I will hearken unto you. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I hope you are all blessed today. Right. God is showing about himself. He's good. Hence he is expecting us to go to him. As a good father. Like we have, as, as a since we know he's a good father, we are going to him. So we are going to him that, you know, then shall, he call, then shall ye call upon me and ye shall go and pray unto me. I will hearken unto you. See, I'm good. So you're coming to me. Okay. And you're, you're calling upon me and you go pray unto me and I will hearken unto you. Whatever you have. 
You can just go to God. You can go to Him as a good friend, as a good brother, you know, as a good mother, as a good, you know, fellow brother. And, you know, our dear Lord is always there. And Jesus Christ is there for us as an advocate. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Then following verse says that, And the conjunction, Ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart. See the confirmation, right? And ye shall seek me when, when you go and pray, you know, God is hearing you. Then he says that, And ye shall seek me. How to seek God? We are going to that room and this room? No. Putting your eyes or placing your eyes or putting a nose in the word of God, you can see God. Hallelujah. One of the places Swami says that, you know, his words is a lamp unto my feet, right? Light unto my path. It's a beautiful verse, right? So I think it's an 119, 105, I believe, in Psalms. So we have to go that it would, you know, just show light. We do not know. Some, some place would look, would look like a dark, you know, so, I mean, you can't even know what is that. When God shows up and, you know, he puts his eye, he, he, he helps you to see a word when you are just getting connected with him. That word from the Bible gives you a light. So you would see exactly that. Oh, this is what is the problem. Oh, this is what is the, you know, kind of... Uh, 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 you know, thing which is going to harm you, or this is what is going to come on the way which is going to bless you because Holy Spirit is always given to us as a comforter. He will show the things to come. How? Through the word or through a prophetical word, right? So we have to be always stay tuned with the Lord and ye shall seek me and find me and ye shall search for me with all your heart. See, the heart is there with all your heart. So this is the core in the core circle which I was talking about previously right it's the inner core so with all your heart when you seek him with all your heart you know you search for him you will find the following verses and I will be found of you amen I will be found of you say the Lord and I will turn away your captivity so this is for another context is given but what I want to talk about today is all about the first commandment and the second commandment I am going to I'm going to go back to this the place where I was uh, you know starting with the word and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all their heart and all their soul and all their mind all their strength is the first commandment the second is that no the second command he says that thou shalt love the neighbor as thyself there's none other commandment greater than these and these two commandments are the greater commandments and there's no other commandments than these so when you start to open up your heart to God when you start to see God which is your core in a circle you would be able to see him and he says you know I will be found of you am I right he said like that I'll be found of you Praise the Lord. So, I'm telling you today, the inner core is very important. So, when you start to, you know, learn of Him, when you, when you start to grow in the knowledge of God, His love will, you know, just start to increase inside of you. Then, obviously, you will be full of Him and full of His love and your entire emotional realm, that's a soul and a mind, would start to reflect the love of God through your actions. That's, uh, you know, the strength. You know, all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, and all of your strength. Then you will start to reflect love of God. When you start to reflect love of God, it's so obvious that you will be able to exactly exercise the second commandment. Love your neighbor as love yourself. I hope you're all blessed today, right? This is a profound truth. Let's focus upon these verses. Huh? It's a, basically, it's a foundation for the Christian, you know, Christians and to follow but what, what all the more need is that Jeremiah 29, 11, 12, 13, right? God bless you all. I hope you are blessed today. See you in the next Bible study. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Bye-bye.